This video is sponsored by Sakurako, an authentic Japanese monthly snack subscription box. If you're interested in Japanese culture or miss Japan, you're in the right place. Today, I'll take you guys along with me and we're gonna experience the Japanese culture together. If you don't know, the legal age in Japan used to be 20. Coming of age is a pretty big deal in Japan. It's a public holiday and ceremonies are held across the country in city halls, ward offices and other official centers. Large cities will host several. From my childhood, my mom always wanted me to experience the Japanese culture as much as other Japanese kids who grew up in Japan. I don't know if other countries celebrate coming of age across the country, but I think it's super unique and I've always wanted to attend the ceremony. But since I residue out of Japan, I couldn't participate in it. Last summer, after turning 20, my family and I brainstormed how I could experience this culture and I came up with a fantastic idea. Since I can't attend the event itself, we decided to celebrate it ourselves. If you don't know, as a part of the ceremony, women dress up in a beautiful and colorful style of kimonos called frisode. A kimono with long dangling sleeves and men wear traditional Japanese dress or suit and tie. Rather than wearing a traditional frisode, I decided to wear the kimono that my great-grandma gifted to my grandma for her wedding. In traditional Japanese wedding, women wear kimono instead of bedding dress. In my opinion, wearing a kimono which has passed through generations to celebrate my coming of age and doing a photo shoot is much better than the official ceremony. Wearing a kimono alone is a pretty tough process, especially if you're a beginner. So most people visit the beauty salon or kimono salon beforehand to help them have their kimono put on and their hair done nicely. We found a studio where they help you to put on your kimono, do your hair, and take your photos. You don't need to bring your own kimono, you can rent the one there. I highly recommend getting your photos taken. Don't worry, it's not considered as a cultural appropriation if you wear kimono respectfully. Majority of the Japanese people would appreciate if you're interested to our culture and enjoy it in a respectful way. There are several studios across Japan giving this service. You can also go outside and spend the day with kimono on. But since it's super hard to move in a kimono, I took it off after our photo shoot. After getting my photos taken, we decided to spend a bit time in Asakusa, then have lunch to celebrate. Asakusa is one of the most popular sightseeing areas in Tokyo. Despite suffering extensive damage during the Tokyo bombings that took place during the Second World War, the area was rebuilt and the preserved historical Shitamachi, so downtown area, of Asakusa is now one of the most visited tourist spots in the city. What you're currently seeing is the Nakamisa shopping street, which connect the front gate and the main hall of Sensoji Temple. The street is full of local shops and food stalls and it's a great place to taste local flavor. The Sensoji Temple is the oldest temple in Tokyo. What you're seeing is, is Ningyoyaki. Ningyoyaki is a very popular in Tokyo Asakusa where you can watch them being baked. Ningyo is a Japanese word for doll, so the name of the sweet reads baked doll. Ningyoyaki are small cakes baked in small molds and are filled with sweet anko bean paste. Ningyoyaki are popular souvenirs and it's fun to discover the different shapes made by different shops.
What I would recommend is you can rent a kimono, put it on, and shop Asakusa with your kimono on with your friends. You can take a bunch of Instagram photos and they were full of girls wearing kimono and taking Instagram pictures. So if you want something for your social media, I would highly, highly recommend to do so. As I said, it's not a cultural appropriation, but more so a cultural appreciation in Japan. Sakurako is a monthly snack subscription box full of 19 traditional, authentic and artisanal snacks and also one kitchenware, delivered straight from Japan to your door. Sakurako curates and provides authentic Japanese snacks, sweets, tea and more from local makers in Japan every month with a different concept. This is shrimp crackers. Let's taste it. Mmm. Mmm. This is like a really great afternoon snack if you like savory snacks. Great thing about Sakurako is that it's not only about enjoying snacks and getting like delicious yummy snacks every month, but more enjoying the culture and experiencing and learning about Japanese culture. They have this booklet where you can learn about the Japanese culture and every month they have a different theme. I forgot to add, this month's theme is tea time in Yokohama. Sakurako is partnering with the Kanagawa government and local snack makers to introduce traditional Yokohama delights in a special Yokohama inspired design box. So you will not get bored each month to read something and even though I'm half Japanese, I always learn something new about Japanese culture, about traditions, and I share it with my family and my mom is even like surprised even though she's fully Japanese. There's so many great information about history, about the culture, about foods, and also you can learn about the each snack too. You can check the allergens and you can also check whether it's vegetarian friendly. All these snacks are made in Japan. I think it's so interesting to experience a culture while eating their stuff. When I go to road with my family, the main thing that we do is not really sightseeing, but enjoying their foods. When eating like foods from other countries, you can learn the culture and you can learn the history deeply with your tongue, you know? Ingredients that they use really shows the climate and how they consume it. Even the same ingredients can be used really differently in different places of the world. And I think it is really interesting. I just, I just, I just love it, you know? Use code Rudy to get 5% off for your first Sakurako box mm. through the link down in the description below. So good. After hanging out a bit in Asakusa, I decided to go to Shibuya, which is one of my favorite places in Tokyo. It's always super crowded and there's so many shopping options and cafe options. And actually, if you visit Japan and if you don't go to Shibuya, what are you doing? There was like a, some sort of a special event going on so you can see a bunch of people wearing yukata the difference between kimono and yukata is that in a simple term think it as like a more casual kimono would be yukata and kimono is much expensive compared to yukata one of my favorite things to do when i go outside is always taking boba <laughs> so i took my boba and i was just chilling there While I was shopping for myself, I randomly came across the Nintendo store and also Jump Shop and also a Pokemon store. As I said, in Shibuya, you can shop for many things. And there are so many special and limited items that were only sold in these stores. So if you're interested in animes or Pokemon or any sort of games, I would highly recommend to check these out. I will put a link down in the description below.
For my dinner, I came to this Shaolongpo. In Japan, we say Shaolongpo, but easy, my friend. Really pronounce it in a different way, so I'm not really sure about the pronunciation, but whatever is my favorite food in the entire world. I know it's not Japanese cuisine, but I wanted to eat it, you know. Whenever I visit Japan, I always, always have Shaolongpo. You can try it, it outside of Japan too. But you know, if you live in Japan and if you have never had Shoulong Poles, I would highly recommend you to do so. After having Xiaolongpo, I finally decided to go back home and this is Shibuya. It's actually much crowded right now. Because of the COVID, you know, a couple of years ago, like a year ago or two years ago, there were no people, not no people, but like less people, you know, compared to normal times. So it's nice to see Shibuya being crowded again because Shibuya should be full of people, you know, it suits to the city and this like crowded rush time is one of the best things about Shibuya in my opinion. Do I want to live here? Probably not, but you know, visiting is a great idea, so. <laughs> 